Hi guys, this week we're going to celebrate Cinco, or get ready to celebrate Cinco de Mayo by making some different how to draw drawings. And I have a few different links for, for you guys to choose from of some um, pretty easy how to draw things. Or if you'd like, you can continue watching this video. And in this video, I show you how to draw the emblem, which is a an eagle on a cactus with a snake in his talons and that's the emblem from the center of the Mexican flag. And before we get started, let's just talk for a second about Cinco de Mayo. A lot of people think that Cinco de Mayo is the Mexican Independence Day, but it's not. It's actually commemorating the Battle of Puebla, which is when the Mexican army defeated the French army and it's a really important battle because it made the Mexican army feel like they could win, you know, and they could really kick the French out and take Mexico for themselves. Because there were only 4,000 Mexican troops and they defeated the French troops and there were 8,000 French troops. Now, it's usually celebrated not so much in Mexico, but in America because about the same time was when the um, the gold miners, the 49ers, were out in California on the California Gold Rush, and some of them were Mexican. So when they heard that the Mexican army had defeated the French, they got really excited, and they threw some big parties, and it caught on in America, and it became an American holiday just as much as a Mexican holiday in some ways. Hi guys, today we're going to be making a the emblem from the Mexican flag to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. And we're going to make it a lot more simplified than it actually is, because it's actually very complicated. Um, so to do it, I'm going to use two circles. I've got this to trace, and then inside of that I'm going to use a glass, the bottom of a glass, because the emblem has two different kind of areas of things that are circles. Um, now remember, when you guys are drawing, always draw light till you get it right. Because that way you can just erase if you make any mistakes. And that's one of the best things you can do to improve your art. If you draw light till you get it right, you can always erase and fix mistakes instead of getting, you know, upset about them. I'm drawing a little bit harder than I should just so you guys can see my lines. So this outside area, coming up to about here, about halfway, that is going to be olive branches on this side and oak branches on that side. And I know that olive branches stand for peace. I'm not sure about the oak branches. Down here in the middle, there's kind of a little ribbon. So I just drew like a circle and then almost like an S shape coming out for that, and it's actually a striped ribbon. Blue, white, and red. And I'm not sure what that stands for. I have to look that up. And then on this side, we have the olive branches, and those come in bunches of four, it looks like. So we'll divide it in half here, and then half that, and half this. And this first part has a little, the little leaves like that. And the second part, same thing, some of the leaves. And I'm not worried about making them exactly right, because when I trace it, that's when I like to make things a little bit more toward being perfect, not while I'm just sketching it. And then in between each bunch of leaves, 
there's kind of a pair of, I guess they're a little like, well, probably olive since it's olive branches. They look like that. And now the oaks on this side. Again, it's four groups of the leaves, so we'll divide it in half and then divide each half into half to have fourths. And the oak leaves look a little bit like puzzle pieces. Kind of cool. We have rounded leaf tips instead of pointed like the olive leaves. And you can hear my cat tiger knocking things over. And then in between the oak leaves, can you guess what? is in between those. It's not olives. If you guessed acorns, you are correct. And those are really easy to make with just two kind of overlapping ovals like that. So three bunches of acorns. Now the top of that circle, nothing, all right? Inside of it though, that's where the eagle goes. Um, so let's start out with, we're gonna divide it up about one third of the way to the top of that circle. Well, about one third from here to there that's where the eagle's foot's going to be. The top of his head will be up here. And he's going to be standing on a cactus. If you know about um, the flag of Mexico and what it stands for, there's an eagle standing on a cactus and the cactus is on top of a rock. And that's how the Aztecs decided where to build Mexico City. It's a pretty cool story. So the rock, to me it doesn't really look like a rock, but it's kind of a cool, like almost a square shape. Or sorry, a rectangle. And it has these curled corners. Like that. It's an unusual looking rock, I'll put it that way. And then across the middle of it, there's stripes, three stripes that are kind of wavy. One, two, three. And then Let's see, we'll go ahead and add the cactus. The cactus actually starts from inside the rock. And it's kind of best to do it like as oval shapes. So we'll put one here. I'm already getting into the area that I said the eagle would be. Remember, draw a light till you get it right. So the oval for the cactus starts actually touching the rock. And another piece of it here. And then it has three more parts that come up over here. One, two, three. And then they 
get kind of connected. So this, it's a cactus. So comes up like that. And that's the first cactus paddle. And then the second one comes out of that one like that. They're kind of shaped like apostrophes too. And then over here on this side, this one kind of comes out like that. They're almost balloon shapes. They're kind of funny shapes, aren't they? And it's okay if they look different. It does not have to be perfect. As long as you get the different parts of the Mexican flag, that's the important part because each part stands for something. And then at each end of the cactus, there's a flower. So one right here. And one over here. They're pretty big flowers. And then there's one more in the middle that sticks up toward toward where the eagle will be. Now I'm not going to show you how to draw the whole Mexican flag because the rest of it's easy. It's just rectangles filled with color. And you guys will get that just fine on your own. And then we should add just a couple of those cactus spines, not all of them. And don't worry about cleaning it up yet. If you have a permanent black marker, you can just go over your lines, um, the lines that you want to keep, and then erase the parts that you want to get rid of. That's the easiest way to clean it up. Now, underneath the rock type thing, there is actually a lake, and that's Mexico. Um, that's the lake that Mexico City is built on. So we're going to add the lake and it's not going to really look like a lake, but that's okay. That's what it looks like on the flag, so that's what we're going with. It's got like some yellow ovals, and we'll color those in later. And some really interesting shapes to it. And I know one of the cooler things that I've learned about Mexico City and that lake that it's on is that that's like the only place in the world that the endangered axolotls are found in the wild. And an axolotl is a type of amphibian, and they are really cool looking. They have gills on the sides of their heads, and I just think that they look really cute. They've got like big smiley faces. There goes my cat tiger knocking stuff over again. So there's the lake. Don't worry, I know it doesn't look like a lake, but it'll get colored in blue and we won't worry about what it looks like. And then on top of the cactus we get to draw our, our uh, eagle eating the serpent, which looks like a rattlesnake. So the eagle, his foot's going to be right here on the biggest part of the cactus. And I'm just going to roughly draw that in. There's some ovals. I'm not going to worry about making it super detailed like it actually is because it's so detailed. There's this big talons. That's what we call the claws on a bird of prey like an eagle. And then his body is going to be kind of big swoosh, almost like an S shaped. His head comes down here and if you want you could just draw an S kind of like that. 
Except don't finish it. Don't put the little part to flip up here. Instead, this is just his leg going into his body. Comes up here. His head is arched. And then that kind of holds, follows the S shape. And this is his body. And his beak is wrapped around the snake. He looks very fierce. Like that. And his eye is kind of underneath this feather on his head. Under his eye. And then he's got. We're not going to draw all the feathers because it gets super, super detailed, but we'll draw this top part of his head, kind of like the American bald eagle. He has a different colored head than his body. And the top of his head ends up being light brown, and the rest of his body is dark brown. So the rest of this will be all feathery too. We'll do extra feathers you can get the idea that he's super feathery just make a kind of a jagged line coming down I'm going up here and now we get to draw his wing so the wings gonna be super easy first you just need to do kind of like the letter C up here if it goes outside of the first circle a little bit that's okay we're not going to worry too much. And then it comes out from here. And a long curved line that kind of follows the edge of the circle, but not completely. Goes down almost to touch, maybe just barely the cactus flower. And then we can draw. We'll simplify it. We're just going to have a row of feathers there. Don't worry too much. They're just almost like waves. And then his wing has a couple of feathers sticking out on this side. And some big, well, maybe I simplified it too much. Erase a little bit. And I'll make sure that I link to this picture for you guys to look at while you're drawing. All right, so that's on this side of our eagle, and I almost forgot his tail. His tail is kind of stuffed in here in between the wing and the cactus. We won't worry too much about that, just like that. All right, and then over here we're going to have the second leg, and I might have to erase a little bit of this flower, it's maybe a little too big. And the second leg comes up like this, and I'm going to just draw a couple of curved lines for his talons, with those claws at the bottom. And you can't see part of it because it's going to be behind the eagle, so then this part is just kind of the top of his leg. And now we get to draw the snake. So the snake kind of starts up here, and I'm just going to make a line first. 
curve down here. It's a pretty curvy snake. I think it's a rattlesnake. So I see a rattle on his tail. And then big turn. And he comes up underneath this way so that the snake's in both his talon and his mouth. This eagle has a really good hold on the snake. And he's turned because he'd like to bite the eagle, but he does not get to bite the eagle. And we do see one big fang coming down. And for whatever reason, oh, he does have a bottom jaw. I was going to say he doesn't even have a bottom jaw, but he does. It's just small. So then he twists back through the eagle's beak. And back in his talons. He's kind of hard to draw because there's so many twists. If you don't want to make him so twisty, that is okay. You can simplify him and just make him like the letter S or something. And then right up here, he has his rattle. So there's one, two, three bands on his rattle. And if I remember what I've learned about rattlesnakes, that means he's three years old or maybe four. I don't know if they get a rattle for their first year. One, two, and don't forget his little snake eyes. And there you have it. That is how you can draw the emblem of the Mexican flag. Remember, draw light until you get it right. And now I'm going to put this into time lapse and then you can quickly see me finish it.